Uh, Caroline, kind of a follow-up question from the previous discussion that we had. So again, AI and future of work. Everyone is talking about, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Is robots taking over? Is automation that much scary or we should be prepared? So in your experience, what tips you have in terms of or what's going to happen in the future in terms of the job market and how recruiters or companies can be prepared or prepare their employees for that? Mm. Great question. And it, you're going to have, I think, quite a few responses to this very same question from different people. Some people will say, oh, it's not going to change anything or, oh, this is great. We're going to have these uh, the AI and automation and chatbots and all of these technologies. So we don't need to have recruiters that they're, they're doing the, the job for them. And my response to that is yes and no. Uh, because you're going to be in a situation where there is going to be this so much technology at your fingertips, which is superb. Uh, there's going to be the situation whereby you're going to find technology that is going to enable you to uh, prevent uh, bias and you're able to ensure that you're able to get a diverse candidate pool and because um, bias is, is huge. We can't help it. We all have our own biases and that there's, there's nothing, if anybody says I don't have biases, well, you can be open to learning what your biases are and, and adjusting it, but everybody has biases. We were born with them. We're not born with them. We evolve into them through through our upbringing and through our education and the um, societies that, that we uh, have been involved in. And we all know that travel and experience and reading uh, is able to in enhance that. So there are lots of opportunities with, uh, with technology that is coming to the forefront. And it's a very, very exciting time because goodness knows it was only five, 10 years ago, let's say 10 years ago, that the hiring was based on everybody's gut feel and it's still to, to, to even today a lot of people are going on gut feel rather than actually using technology so my my thinking is that it's a very exciting time i think it's going to really uh, balance the the playing field for candidates and i think it's going to really open up everybody's eyes within an organization on what what they need to fix from an internal perspective, from uh, from a mindset perspective, and and I think it will actually create great opportunities. I'm saying think a lot because we don't know. I know that there is a lot of uh, fantastic, uh, there are a lot of fantastic uh, case studies out there that are really and truly being able to take charge of uh, uh, or are giving really good indications of how it's working. But there's also going to be a dark side. So and the dark side being a lot of organizations will want to remove recruiters from the process or, or whatever that situation is. And I think it isn't a case of saving money that I think a lot of companies will think that way. Mm -hmm. And really people need to organizations and leaders need to think about what type of leaders, human capital leaders, they, they should have within the organization. So that's going to be a, uh, People who, who focus on philosophy have that really good understanding of philosophy, uh, the art and the arts, because they're going to understand really what potential decisions, are, 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 how they go, how that's going to impact the company. Um, and to have that uh, seat at the table at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the board, because if they don't, organizations will just be chasing the, the dollar, uh, essentially. And that's, that's typical. We're, we all want to create revenue so we can uh, make profits um, and, of course, uh, pay, pay the salaries and the benefits of the people that, that uh, are employed. So there are lots of opportunities there. But I also have an emotional intelligence kind of skew on that. And I talk about this in my book, Elephants Before Unicorns, uh, Emotionally Intelligent Strategies to Save Your Company. And the... The, the 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 opportunity is to try and work out which part of the AI stack you need to employ right now because you're just going to be completely and utterly uh, deluged and drowning in the different solutions that are there. So you have to take a really good look at your organization. And this needs to be approved by the CEO because too often the CEO will just say, look, you've got this budget, you've got $10,000 budget or $100,000 budget, half a million budget, whatever the budget is. And 
everything will be shoehorned into that. Mm -hmm. And so you need to look at really what your budget is and look at which level of the AI stack or the technology stack you need for your for the a a HR future and to invest in it year on year because it's going to be evolving year on year. And I have a great uh, example of how an organization was, be was able to... Um, work out what was wrong with their employer brand and why com individuals were not, uh, let me rephrase that again, why, why individuals who had gone through the recruitment process with that organization, how they had decided to unplug their subscription with them because of that experience. So I think when CEOs understand the impact of recruiters, the HR process, the uh, candidate process, the employer experience, it's going to completely change the, 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 the way that organizations run. But it really takes that giant leap from the CEO. Yeah, I totally agree. And it all different from company to company. And they need to make sure that what's working for them may not be working for the competitor or what's happening today can be changed. So it just so we have open minded, make sure that we, there's an alignment also and make sure that that's benefits for them and not for others. Absolutely. It's 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 it isn't a case of saying, oh, well, this company does this. We should also be reaching it. You've really got to think uh, from a strategic perspective, just where you are, where you want to go and how you're going to get there and then be prepared to be flexible and to change how you're absolutely actually operating it depending on the feedback that you're getting from from the audience uh because you know the customers often have an awful lot of insight on on how how something is working and if if that feedback isn't incorporated into creating some kind of change within the organization we, we know what we're, we're in trouble <laughs> again <laughs> thank you caroline for sharing that insight yeah. and uh Again, if anyone has any other tips, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, subscribe to the channel, share and like this video, and tune in tomorrow for another question with Caroline. Thank you.